This is going to be Shadow Labyrinth as Mr. Weaver Monk. Uh, so, Burning Crusade Dungeon. I believe this is part of the Auchendoon complex. Same as Sethic Hall's... Um, have I done Sethic Hall's yet? No, I haven't. Uh, Auchenai Crypts and... What's the other one? Manitoums. I think those are all in Auchendoon. Maybe. Anyway, uh, so I see a warlock. Um, what's the tank? Looks like a warrior. Uh, a death knight is here. And I see another monk. Somebody's put a moon on me. People sometimes do this. So tank gets a star, I get a moon. Uh, just those little markers always show up, even through walls, and it helps party members keep track of, uh, important other party members. So you'll always know where the tank and healer are. It's kind of big on my screen. It doesn't really block anything. It's a little distracting, so, you know, I don't, like, set it on myself or anything every time I go into a dungeon. But if somebody sets it on me and wants to know where I am at all times, that's fine. Um, okay, so Death Knight Tank, that's what's going on. I do remember liking this dungeon a whole lot. It had been a long time since I had done it. And I forgot some important things, as you'll see later. Hey, look, I leveled up. Oh, hey, level 75. That means I get a talent point to spend. I'll bet I don't bother to do that mid-dungeon. But I do get some important stuff at some point here. Um, kind of watching what this Windwalker monk is doing. I saw that spinning crane kick that, well, I don't know how Windwalker works. I tried to figure it out once and didn't get very far, so I shouldn't judge her for her actions. But I'm seeing a spinning crane kick in situations where there are almost, where there are not like a whole lot of enemies surrounding her. Um, as a Mistweaver, at least that's the only time I want to use it, but maybe there's something different with Windwalker. Oh yeah, there's a quest uh, to find a dude who's like, you go around this circle, get to the other side of this room, then get to the other side of the circle. I forget if we take the detour for that, because it's a little bit of a detour. I'm trying to figure out what all the quests I'm on mean. So let's see, thing to know about this room. All of the... Uh, Cabal Ritualists, who are like channeling into these pillars on the four sides in this room. You gotta take those all out to free the boss who's standing at the end of it. Can't skip any or the boss will be unattackable. I mean, all that means is if you try to go up and attack the boss after skipping stuff, you know, you won't be able to do anything and you look silly. Stuff like this is why I like to go back uh, to dungeons after I outlevel them and do practice runs just so I'm sure I know all the, as many of the nuances of routing as I can. Um, because when I'm going through a dungeon like this, it's often, you know, just like in the normal course of things, you'll see uh, every enemy in the room get engaged. And I don't always know whether that's just because uh, the people I'm playing with felt like doing that. They just wanted to fight everything in the room. Or if... Wait, did we even fight this boss? I don't think he's sure either. Using Death Grip. Death Grip doesn't work on that, apparently. Makes it attack him, but doesn't pull it to his location. Okay, we're just skipping this whole room? Maybe? I don't know. I keep looking at my map for some reason. Anyway, yeah, so uh, I like to go back and do practice runs uh, just so that I can learn more of the nuances of the mechanics because when I'm in a group, often just, like, people will do things and I don't always know whether they're necessary or not until I try to come to a dungeon alone so there's nobody around just kind of doing things um, so that I will see what exactly fails if I skip a step in the dungeon. Um, and I've had a lot of extremely satisfying runs with my Protection Paladin lately that I credit to having thoroughly researched and routed the dungeons that I run through ahead of time. When I know exactly what to do, 
and I'm playing the dungeon leader, the tank, um, and can just pull pretty much whatever group uh, through the dungeon. It just feels really good. It's very satisfying to have a route in mind and be able to follow it. This is another one of those situations where it looks like I have a fear effect on me, but I maintain control over my character. That must just be an effect that shares some graphics with what fear normally looks like. Huh. Okay. But also, um, I mean, improvising is fun. Like, when things go wrong... I don't know, I enjoy some extent of chaos in a dungeon. I try to control it as much as possible, but when it happens... It leads to interesting situations where I actually have to, you know, figure out what to do. Deal with a problem as it happens. The least fun problem to deal with is party members starting fights with each other. <laughs> that happens. Not that often, but when it happens it really stands out. So it feels like it happens more often than it does, even if it's only like, you know, one in 30 dungeons or so has a, a problem person in it. It's probably not even that many. But, you know, it's very, very noticeable when it does. Okay, right, so Ambassador Helma, he's just incorporeal, unattackable. <laughs> Wretched's trying to figure out why, I guess. Yeah, okay. So, like, this, this right here is exactly what happens when um, you haven't researched the route ahead of time. This is 100% fine and would be, like, super fun in a brand new dungeon, like in a new expansion, with four guildmates or other friends you knew. Uh, just learning by doing. That's not the situation in which I currently play this game, though. So just with a random group of strangers, it really makes things a lot smoother when at least one person knows what they're doing. Because I feel like the default expectation going into one of these dungeons, especially really old ones, is that at least one person will probably know what they're doing. Sometimes people take that expectation to an extreme and just can't handle it if, um, if learning has to happen. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. It's, it just depends on the random group you get. And since you're playing with random people, you don't really choose ahead of time in the dungeon finder. Um, I just find it best to control as many variables as, as I reasonably can before going in. Alright, so Ambassador Helma was released, is now attackable. This is something I feel like... A set of actions you end up taking a lot in this game, where, like... Some group of attackable enemies... Oh, he has a real fear. I see. Uh, some group of attackable enemies is, like, restraining a demon. You can come up and kill them so that they'll stop restraining it. They'll implore you not to do that because... Uh, you know, this abomination they're keeping contained is gonna be terrible if it gets out. Then you fight the demon and everything's fine, I guess. I don't know. It's just one of those patterns that shows up over and over. Okay, so everybody spread out a lot after that fear. Nobody gets any control over where they run, they just run. Uh, Fury Warrior, I know, has a... right. My Fury Warrior has a button where I can choose to stop being feared. You know, once every so often, so I couldn't do it twice in a row like that. Three times in a row like that. You don't fight him too near this room. There are people to fight in here. Please take him away from... oh, he's dead. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Boy, I used Soothing Mist so differently back then than how I do it now. See, like, with that Warlock's health down the way it was, I would have just cast a Renewing Mist and then one Vivify and she would have been full, instead of sitting there and channeling Soothing Mist. I wonder if that would be more or less mana efficient. Probably less, but it'd be quicker. Also, the power of Vivify increases significantly as my levels go up. It's okay now, but not amazing. 
but it gets to be pretty much my best healing spell at maximum level. Uh, Soothing Mist's purpose becomes mostly just to make Enveloping Mist uh, instant and vivify if I really, really need some heavy throughputs. But yeah, mostly just Renewing Mist and uh, Hardcast Vivify and don't really do that much healing at max level right now. But I'm not doing uh, the truly challenging contents. I've had this character at maximum level for like quite a while now, and I still have not set foot in a single mythic dungeon. You gotta make your own group for those. Can't use the dungeon finder for it, and well, I'm, I mean, not only that, but there are quite a few heroic and even normal dungeons that I still haven't done with her. Just my priorities have been um, getting reputations up, earning allied races, uh, supporting my several other characters I have now. I'll get to the maximum level dungeons eventually, but it might be when another character reaches 120. We'll see. I have such a huge backlog of these, uh, these videos here that I certainly will not come anywhere close to running out by the time I... Well, I mean, it depends how long I wait. I could run out of my backlog before I've set foot in any of those if I keep on doing what I'm doing. I don't know. But yeah, my hope eventually is to do Mythic Dungeons. Uh, those get a time limit and sort of adjustable difficulty of some sort. Well, I don't know exactly because I've never been in one. Um, but I know what I've read about them and they sound interesting. Let's see, I know this now. I must not have known for sure then the answer to this question. I thought he did. Yeah, everybody wants to clear it first, and the answer is yes. If you attack Blackheart the Insider up there without clearing the rest of the room, he will... Um... Okay, so based on this, this Death Knight has played this dungeon before, but a long time ago. Kind of same situation I'm in. Uh... Yeah, so it's, it's not his first time here, just it has been a while. That's why he's behaving as he is. Oh no, I have threat on something. He hasn't picked up a couple of casters who are outside the, uh, the group of enemies we're fighting. However, nobody's doing any damage, so it's not really a problem. Mm, somebody's doing some damage, but they weren't doing much to me. It does take kind of a little while to clear this room, so I get why you'd want to skip it. Um, there's another side to it yet. However, uh, no, there aren't any quest-related things in here. Nope, you just have to do it to make sure that the boss is... Oh yeah, right, check dungeon guide. Incite chaos, yeah, that's gonna be fun. <laughs> that's the only notable thing he really does, but it is notable. You'll see what it is when it happens. Don't we have a quest to kill the malicious instructors? Maybe we already finished it. Or maybe I'm thinking of something else. Seed of Corruption. Let's see. Something something detonates when dispelled or expires or... I didn't have time to read that tooltip. There's something special about Seed of Corruption. Let's see, we do have a warlock in the party, however, these some of these things that we're fighting are also basically warlocks. So it's hard to tell whether that happened from a spell reflect. I guess I would know, well, I might know based on whether or not our warlock is an affliction warlock. Um, and I can't tell that at a glance. She has a fell guard, which I think means demonology. At least it used to, but that might not be true now. I want to create my Warlock in the last of the Horde allied races that I haven't unlocked yet. Um, still working on that one. I do have my Druid now. High Mountain is done. So that's great. There we go. That's Insight Chaos. I didn't have any control over myself. <laughs> so he says, time for fun. 
everybody loses control and attacks each other. So it's a mass mind control. I'm not doing any of this. Okay, I have control over myself again. It's not really dangerous unless you haven't killed everything else in the room. It just kind of waits time and, you know, will wear down your health a little bit, but whoa. <laughs> yeah, okay. So Warlock had threat for a moment. Tank hadn't picked him back up. And that's what happens when a boss hits somebody who is not uh, as durable as a tank. Which is pretty much everybody who has not specialized as a tank. I think the difference used to be less stark, like plate armor wearers, you know, a Fury Warrior, a Retribution Paladin, stuff like that, uh, could take a few hits. I feel like that's less true now than it used to be. Oh, a second time for fun. Well, it made me drink my fortifying brew. <laughs> Everybody hits each other. Okay, I didn't realize there was a second time for fun if you, uh... Um... If the battle takes long enough, he was almost dead. His text says, this no good, but he pronounces it as, oh, oh. that's all you hear. <laughs> <laughs> all right, death knight disease is all up on everybody. Oh, hey, I used revival while mind controlled, so I can't use that to remove those diseases. That's fine. They're not really a problem. Expire quick anyway. I got a health stone. I will never think to use that because I just, I just don't. <laughs> uh, that is something I need to learn. Like, have a dedicated place on my action bars for healing mana, healing potions, mana potions, health stones, which I think are separate cooldown from healing potions, and learn to use them when the situation calls for it. I just have never had a situation that has really called for it enough to bother to learn to do that yet. That is the sort of thing that is likely to change when and if I start doing Mythic Dungeons. Because from what I understand, those basically scale up in difficulty to the point where no one in the world has gotten it done, so they don't really have a ceiling on them. Or if they do, it, it is above all current players' skill level. From what I've read. So yeah, just limited by how well you can play the game. Which itself is limited by its own mechanics, you know, there's there's a limit on damage and healing throughput and stuff. There was mind control going on there. I saw that monk's nameplate in red. Okay, so additional things continue to mind control here. Good to know. The other Death Knights party frame has had a red outline around it for a while, so he's counted as in combat with something. Don't know what. There was no combat happening. What the heck? Ogolad Zira What did that say? It was like some weird messed up text in my, my text log down there. What was that? It looked like the sort of gibberish that was like... If someone in game is speaking a language that my character doesn't understand, but it didn't have a speaker. Whoops, apparently I stood too close to that. <laughs> was not really aware that there was a bone pile there. Until they started making noises at me. Okay, yeah, they just come up when you get close to them. That's how it is. But they die, like, instantly. Ogolad Zera Pharmos Theramas. Yeah, what? What is that nonsense? I have no idea. That's very strange. Amora Lion's still in combat with something somehow. That's really annoying when you want to, like, sit down and eat or something. Or, you know, take some other action that's illegal while you're in combat. It's kind of funny, like, 
This has been a problem in this game for all 15 years of its existence. This whole thing where, like, due to some combination of game bugs, you know, latency, server disagreeing with... Oh, I'm just completing this quest while we're fighting. Fair enough, I'm the healer. When my actions are not needed, I can do stuff like that, I guess. Uh, anyway, yeah, so, um... Yeah, it has been a source of constant annoyance when you get teleported. You gotta move real quick or you take heavy damage, like, like is happening here. I use revival. That was a good idea. Uh, yeah, so, right. Stuck in combat bugs. Um, always been a problem in this game. Always been super annoying. Situation has not gotten any better. <laughs> uh, I guess basically, like, if the server has decided that something out in the world is targeting you and is angry at you, then you're not allowed to take any of the actions like getting on a mount or eating or drinking or several other things that you can only do when you're out of combat. Until it decides to allow you to count as out of combat. Usually, if you move a sufficient distance away from the thing that's targeting you, whatever it is, which you can't really tell normally, uh, It'll unload and stop targeting you, or go back to its um, its patrol range and stop targeting you. That doesn't work in a dungeon, because unlike out in the world, where everything has a maximum range that it will chase after you, uh, everything in a dungeon will chase you forever. So when you're in an instanced area, nothing ever forgets you, so you can't just walk away to drop combat. Um, but I mean, sometimes, even still... <laughs> You'll get stuck when it doesn't make any sense and um, just be unable to drop it no matter what you do until you log out of the game. <laughs> just seems like, you know, in 15 years, a solution would eventually have been found to that problem, but either it's not considered enough of a problem or there's some, like, real serious technical reason, something fundamental to the game's architecture that just makes it hard to fix. Hey, I'm almost done with my Grizzly Trophy collection for this cycle. <laughs> Dark Moon Fair, by the way, comes around once a month at the beginning of the month. Lasts uh, a week or so. And every month you can do that uh, Grizzly Trophy quest to get killing blows and 250 things, basically. And it gives you some small uh, currency rewards and reputation rewards and stuff, so it feels like it's worth doing. Just means that I'll see that stuff up on my uh, screen... Uh, for a while until I get 250 kills every time that is what's going on. Ah, I used... I believe I used Paralyze on the Windwalker Monk while she was mind-controlled. It looked like that was what happened. Wow, hefty damage here. I'm seeing some... Bladestorm effects. Whirlwind, whatever you want to call those. People may have been standing in those. Okay, Murmur. Big air elemental coming up. <laughs> this was the important mechanic to this dungeon that I had completely forgotten. I think a couple of other people here forget it too. So there's some important stuff to know about this boss. I think the thing is he does a super huge attack that does less damage the further away you are from him. but I should check the dungeon guide to be sure, because I'm still not, like, 100% on it. Um, but yeah, let's see what happens here. These three dudes are trying to control him, constantly getting knocked down. <laughs> Once again, people keeping the demon contained are people that we fight so that the demon gets uncontained, then we fight the demon. Only it's not a demon this time, it's some kind of... I don't know what Murmur is. I think he's an air elemental of some sort. Hey, 250. Grizzly Trophy's done. That's nice. He makes cool, weird noises. I always like this fight just because of, like, the sound design is so... Yeah, like, sound is Murmur's thing. He makes noise, he silences a lot. Starts at like a third of his health for some reason. I think because of the three broken who were trying to keep him contained. They wore him down already. 
I'm surprised I haven't gotten silenced yet. I thought that was a thing that he did, like, a lot. But I guess he can't really have a fight where your healer's always silenced. I mean, you just won't be able to... Okay, Sonic Boom. Let's see what this is. I am silenced now. Yeah, that one basically killed me. And I'm silenced. I used Revival. Okay, so I took a big... Okay, yeah, that was not the most conspicuous... Um attack I've ever seen. I saw his cast bar. If I'd had someone else targeted, I wouldn't have known it. Uh, and that wasn't like a super long cast, but yeah, you just have to know that when he sonic booms, uh, blast players within 341 yards with nature damage. Inflicts additional nature damage every three seconds. Okay, that's what actually killed me. Well, effect and movement speed is reduced 90%. Yeah, see, the problem is... Dungeon Guy doesn't really tell you how you need to handle this because um, it says players within 341 yards, which is a very long way. Oh, <laughs> he's still getting me. Well, it's a very long way, not, but not that long, is it? Maybe. Yeah, we're still getting killed by him even trying to run back while our other party members are in combat up there. Murmur draws energy from the air. Weirdly, somehow... <laughs> The rest of the party, who's still in there, uh, does fine without me or the tank. So three damage dealers are in there, handling it completely on their own, and they're kind of okay? <laughs> Maybe the three of them know the dungeon better than either of us does. And are just experts who know how to avoid his attacks and take him down without a tank or a healer. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, so the dungeon guy doesn't really explain that Sonic Boom... D well, it doesn't say whether Sonic Boom does less damage if you're farther away or if you have to be out of line of sight. Let's see, I think this one is farther away. There's another similar mechanic in Sethic Halls where you have to be out of line of sight, I think? Yeah, there we go. So, <laughs> those three got the job done somehow without us. One of them did die from it, but but it was done. So that was nice. <laughs> uh, uh, yep, I'm on my way to resurrect people. Right, because um, the two who are remaining are a Death Knight and a Warlock. Warlock can't directly resurrect. I used my SS. Or maybe... Okay, no, Death Knight can resurrect, apparently. Okay. Hold on, it was just two damage dealers left there. The Warlock and the... Um... Uh... Windwalker. Windwalker ended up dying. Warlock got it done. Oh! So they did kind of have a tank, because a Warlock can summon a Voidwalker, who's sort of a tank pet. So maybe that was how that problem was solved. Well, I wasn't there to see, so I couldn't tell. <laughs> Alright, so uh, yeah, dungeon's semi-done. There's still quests and stuff to turn in. There's that dude uh, down the hallway. You can see where the question mark is. Am I not going to teleport out? It'd be quicker. It'd be a lot quicker. Yes, I am. Document Fair. Here's where I can turn in my uh, Grizzly Trophy quest. But I didn't want to take the time I then. Right, I have unspent talent points. I did something that made my UI notice that I have unspent talent points, so it wants to bug me about them again. Uh, what does this quest here chain onto? There's something. So yeah, you can see... You could see the question mark for a moment, but you have to go all the way around here to get to where the dude is. I don't know why they put him so far out of the way. Like, this is a part of the dungeon you would just never go to. Unless you're specifically doing this quest. Find Spy Togun or whatever. Yeah, so anyway. um, I do wish the ability listing in the dungeon guide were a little more specific about the mechanics of... Uh, how Sonic Boom works. Because it just says within 341 yards. And like, if you can see an enemy, it's within 341 yards. Uh, pretty much. 
Um, so you will definitely not be running out of that range during how long it takes to cast that. However, to be fair... Oh, okay, that chains onto the soul devices. So I'm going to go hunt down some items you can pick up. Which is fine, because, you know, this is a dungeon that's already clear. There's... I think we killed everything in it. If not, we killed enough that if there are any remaining threats, we don't have to worry about them because they're contained and just don't get close and get their attention. Yeah, so anyway, uh, to be fair, the dungeon guide did not exist back when this dungeon was current. So anything written there is done after the fact. So, you know, little things like exactly some of the important mechanics of Sonic Boom are not too surprising to be to have been left out. Though it's fine. Back then you just kind of had to know, so you still just kind of have to know how to handle it. Uh, yeah, there are a whole lot of soul devices at the end. Um, a few scattered here and there. Just need five per person. Interesting that these two have stuck around. Now, mm, no, this makes sense. Never mind. I was going to say something, but then I realized what I was going to say did not make sense. <laughs> All right, five soul devices. Uh, teleport out. It'll be quicker. Just do it. Yes, it's at the entrance. There. <laughs> I have unspent talent points, by the way. So we'll probably see what I spent those on next time. Alright, that was Shadow Labyrinth. See you for the next one.